so students we are going to study the topic gravitational potential energy today so potential energy as we have studied earlier also i am reading from the book as we discussed earlier the notion of potential energy is being the energy stored in the body at a given at its given position and if the position of the particle changes on account of the forces acting on it then the change in its potential energy is just the amount of work done on the body by the force so like here in this case we are going to study that the work done is uh, so this our earth this earth surface and i have a mass at height h and i lifted this mass from height h1 so this height h1 so initial height and i have lifted this mass to height h2 okay so what will be the work done in this case this is mg delta h so that's the uh, potential energy uh, change so this is the change in potential energy right and that is equals to the work done okay and what's this delta h delta h is of course h2 minus h1 so that's your delta h change in height so due to this change in height you have lifted this mass m against the gravitational pull of the earth so this is the work done by the external force in lifting the mass m from h1 to h2 so that's change in potential energy of the object okay so if the position of particle changes on account of forces acting on it then the change in its potential energy is just the amount of so this change in its uh, potential energy is just is just the amount of work done on the body by the external force so we have uh, <coughs> the amount of work done by external force so this work done by external force okay and this is the change in potential energy of the body whose mass is m so forces on which uh, work done is uh, independent of path so here this uh, so you can take this uh, mass m from here here and you can follow this path also okay you can follow this path also so any of the path you are following still this work done will be the same so so the work done is independent of the path it's independent of the path why because we are doing the work against the gravitational force and gravitational force is a conservative force so in case of conservative force the work done is independent of the path so that's we studied in chapter number 6 okay students note it down along with me so force of gravity is a con uh, conservative force and we can calculate the potential energy of the body arising out of that force and that force uh, uh, is uh, the potential energy of the body so the potential energy of the body arising due to gravitational force so that potential energy is the gravitational potential energy so gravitational potential energy is the potential energy of the body which is which arises which has arise due to the gravitational force so now let us consider points close to the surface of the earth so these two points are uh, 
means this point at height h1 and this is at height h2 these two points are quite near to the surface of earth Uh, so at the distances the surface is uh, the surface much smaller than the radius of the earth so quite near to the surface of earth so when it is quite near to the surface of earth acceleration due to gravity is same at both the places and we assume that uh, the force of gravity is equals to mg over here also and mg over here also that so that's that's same at height h1 and uh, h2 that is why i have taken this mg as common because this so work done is equals to uh, final potential energy mg h2 minus initial potential energy mg h1 so mg is same at both the places so mg is taken common and delta h h2 minus h1 is delta h so if we consider a point at height h1 from the surface of the earth and another point vertically above it at height h2 from the surface so h2 from the earth surface the work done in lifting the particle of mass m from the first to the second position is denoted by so this work done is uh, uh, we can write it as uh, work done in taking the body from height h1 to h2 so this is 1 2 2 this is how we write and we know the formula of work done that is force into displacement f into s so what's the force here force is uh, mg that is the gravitational force and into what is the displacement here displacement here is uh, uh, h2 minus uh, h1 so same thing uh, means how it arises so that's how it arises So that's equation 8.20 in our book. Now, if we associate the potential energy WH, so you can clearly see that the work done is a function of H. And you know this work done is nothing but the uh, potential energy, right? Change in potential energy of the body. And suppose now you are lifting the body from the surface. So this is the surface. And now you are lifting the body from the surface to height h. So that's that's the height h. So now you are lifting the mass from the surface to height h. So this is your this will be your potential energy because uh, this. So here W is equals to this potential energy is the work done because here the potential energy you can assume as uh, zero and then it is the mg h plus W naught. So this is the potential energy at the surface. So you have uh, lifted it this, this is the change in potential energy right this is the change in potential energy so this was the energy at the surface and this is a change in potential energy and this is the total potential energy at uh, height h okay so potential energy at height h you can also write it as uh, u h so work done uh, so potential energy at height h or the work done in taking the body from uh, body from the surface of the earth to height h is equals to this is the change in potential energy my plus the potential energy at the surface so this m g h is the change so this uh, w naught is uh, of course it is constant right potential energy at the surface is constant so now uh, then it is clear that uh, f1 uh, this uh, w12 is equals to so 
so if this is for uh, 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 w one two means from taking one to two so how much is the work done taking one to two so the initial potential energy was this one uh, means the final is uh, the potential energy at h2 minus the potential energy at uh, h1 so this is the uh, you can say the change in potential energy is the potential energy at height h2 minus potential energy at height h1 so that potential energy or in terms of work done it's the same thing because work done is nothing but the change in potential energy okay so the work done in moving the particle is just the difference of the potential energy okay so here also the work done is nothing but the difference uh, change in potential energy so students it's, it's all we are all discussing and and uh, different different ways to write the same thing we are writing the same thing work done against the gravitational force is the energy stored is the potential energy stored in the body change in the potential energy of the body okay so the work done in moving the particle is just the difference of the potential energy between the initial positions and uh, final position so this is your final position and this is your uh, so u final u initial and that is your this this is your change in potential energy okay observe that the constant w not cancels out of course this is this cancels out this because this this will be this uh, if we'll be writing it so w for h2 so here you will have mg h2 plus w not because this constant and then so mg so if you put the value this uh, putting h is equals to h2 what do you get mg h2 plus w not minus put h is equal to h1 here what do you get minus mg h1 minus w not so this w not is ultimately going to cancel out and you get mg h2 minus h1 and that is nothing but mg delta h okay so you can see that uh, in this equation in this equation we have taken the means uh, this h2 as h and this h1 as a uh, zero okay so if you put h is equals to zero here what is this uh, we find out uh, how much the potential energy at uh, so here in this equation put uh, h is equals to zero means on the surface of earth right on surface of earth so what is this potential energy so w h is equals to this, this will become zero plus w naught means this is equals to w naught which is constant so we are assuming that the uh, energy on the surface is uh, uh, w naught okay so w naught is the energy at the surface of earth okay now if we consider uh, the po uh, points at arbitrary distance from the surface of earth the result just derived is uh, not valid why because the assumption that gravitational force mg is a constant is no longer valid you are taking a distance far far away we know that this is earth surface near to the earth surface the value is g if you are moving off g is decreasing if you are even moving into the depth still g is decreasing so at both the places uh, going above and below the surface of earth this acceleration due to gravity will decrease okay so mg is not constant so if you are choosing any arbitrary distance from the surface of earth far far away even from the surface of earth this point is that point is far away so of course uh, the, we have uh, done the formula also uh, if uh, the uh, means uh, 
gravitational pull at uh, far away distance and that is uh, equation number 8.15 and that G uh, at, at a significant height H so this is height H so the G at this height is given by GH is equals to G 1 minus 2H upon RE so G is reduced by this factor okay this we have done in the morning class right this equation number 8.15 so gravitational force is not constant uh, with height significant height from the earth and however from our discussion we know that a point outside the earth the force of gravitation on the particle is directed towards the center of the earth so if we have a suppose mass m over here and the distance is suppose r then force acting on this mass is given by so m, m e is the mass of the earth so that is given by force is equals to g m e g m1 m2 upon r square distance between them so that's the gravitational force acting on the particle which is pulling the particle towards the center of the earth okay so uh, this r is, is this r from here no this r is from the uh, center of the earth students this this r is uh, from the point mass m to the center of the earth so this is actually this is your center of earth and this is your uh, height h and this is your radius of the earth so this is uh, uh, this is your h so this r this r is equals to r e radius of earth plus this h distance okay this is what your r is so this my so g m1 m2 upon r square what is this r square this is the distance between this point mass and the from the center of the earth this distance that's, that's this distance is r okay Now if we calculate the work done in lifting the particle from R1 to R2. So now instead of measuring this H1 and H2 we were measuring it from the surface of earth. Now we are measuring uh, from the uh, center of the earth. So this distance was uh, this mass M and this distance was R1 and now I've, I've lifted this mass to this point okay so now the mass is over it. so this distance is r2 okay so from r1 to r2 so what will the work done so work done in taking uh, the object from position r1 to r2 is uh, given by because see we are discussing the case where g is changing right where this g is not constant this g is variable it is it depends on h so we are at a significant height from the surface of the earth so here also this r here here g is different here here g is different so here g g at r1 is different from g at r2 so okay so uh, you can even write here uh, you want to write you can write here at this point g1 you can write here here the acceleration to gravity is g2 so it's not same it's it's different okay so it means uh, what is the force acting acted over here on this mass so the force acted over here was uh, uh, that is uh, the weight m g1 right so at uh, at distance r1 the force was at this point so w1 is equals to m g1 right 
and here the weight of the body that is a force acting on it by the earth is m g2 so different force are acting from here to here so at every point different different force and we are moving against the variable force so when we move against the variable force we know if the force is constant that's f uh, into s but if the uh, if the uh, force is variable then the force constant for the small distance for the small distance for the small distance for, and uh, we we keep on adding those small distances okay so these are infinite distances so f uh, dot ds and here angle is uh, zero because we are lifting it vertically so vertically it is, we are lifting so the cos zero is one so we can write fs that's the magnitude so so work done is equals to fs when this is the variable force so this is the formula for the constant force and this is the formula for the variable force chapter number six right so f ds so now what is f here so f is gm upon r square this is your f so what will be the work done in taking the body from 1 to 2 so w12 that's equals to uh, so what are the limits here from r1 to r2 okay so from position r1 to r2 uh, force what is the force this is g even if we write capital m that is for the mass of the earth and then small m mass of the object divided by r square into dr okay now integrating it what do you get see students what is the formula for integration uh, you have r s to the power n into dr that is equals to r s to the power n minus 1 divided by n minus 1 right so and here i have r square so if i have r 1 upon r square dr so that uh, means uh, this is uh, power is already r is to a minus 2 so so r is to the power minus 2 dr we can write so this is this is plus one student sorry not not minus one in case of differentiation d by dx of x is point is equals to n x n minus one so that is for the differentiation and for the integration the formula is r is to n plus one upon n plus one so here you have to integrate this so this will comes out to be power add plus one to it so minus two plus one is minus one upon uh, minus one right so this is minus one upon r okay so the constant will come outside g m m integration of one by r square into dr and this will comes out to be g m m and write the uh, r2 to r1 r, r1 to sorry r1 to r2 and this is uh, minus one by r this integration and it's r1 to r2 okay So what do we get? That's equals to. Uh, so this minus will come out. G. This is small m. This capital M. G m m. Into. Now put uh, uh, final value r is equals to r two minus initial value. That is r one. So students, that's my work done. Okay. So when uh, I was at a significant distance where G is variable, so here G is varying, okay, and this is the work I have uh, done. So now this equation uh, that we have written over here. So this equation 8.24, okay. And now we can thus associate the potential energy WR. Uh, so in place of uh, equation 8.21, this is your equation 8.21, this equation. We can associate the 
potential energy wr at a distance r so instead of h work done at a distance r so how we are going to write it so so like sir ye integration kyu hua yes sir ye integration aapne yahan pe kyu kiya integration kyu kiya see when the force is constant we have the formula work done is equals to force into displacement but when the force is variable i am here the force acceleration due to gravity was different so weight weight was different here also at every point what is the force by which the earth is pulling you that is equals to m into g that is the weight of the body right so at all these points value of so here suppose it is 9.789 so here the value will be 9.788 then 9.787 then 9.786 so the value of g is decreasing as you moving up so as the value of g is changing so the force which is the gravitational pull by the earth is also decreasing so force is changing so i am also not applying the same force so when the force is changing so what will the work done so i will be adding so this is a small work done dw this is again the small work done dw this is again the small work done dw again the small work done dw so for this dw i can assume that the force is constant for for very small distance so i will write that the force is f and the displacement is small displacement so for small displacement i can assume the force is constant so i'm using writing this formula dw is equals to fds so then again dw is equals to fds again dw is equals to fds again so this these are Uh, of course these are the, this force f1 this force f2 this force f3 because this force are changing then f4 into ds so now i want to add i want to uh, do the total work i want to find the total work done so total work done is uh, adding all these works adding all these uh, dw so uh, if i want more accurate answer i want force to be constant this uh, displacement should be you know limited to zero so here i i would be writing like small work done is equals to f into delta so this this i should write at all these four places and then this delta uh so then i will be adding all this delta to find the total work done and that is equals to delta now this force is uh, uh, almost constant so that is why i have used this uh, formula for the constant force f into ds now if i am taking delta s tends to zero as small as possible then only the force will be constant so when i am taking this uh, delta s so these numbers will be infinite so how to add infinite work done so for that the symbol of summation changes to integration so integration means adding up sum adding up infinite values so when you want to add infinite values that is the this operation integration and this f so this uh, summation sign change to long s integration sign f is the same and this delta sign change to ds so that's the formula for the work done by the variable force and now So what is the force here? Force is force was g m one m two upon r square, so f into dr. So write as or dr or dl. That's the same thing. And uh, in integration constant comes outside. And now integration of one by r square means r is to the power two. So minus two plus one r is to the minus one. So and uh, divided by minus one. Right. and this comes here that is equals to minus 1 by r so this this integration minus 1 by r and then the limits r1 to r2 so how do we uh, remove the limits put uh, this how do we solve it put r is equals to r2 final value minus this negative is outside okay so 1 by r is there so final value minus initial value r1 okay so that's how we get to work to from is it clear yes sir so now 
in place of uh, uh, this equation how I can uh, uh, rewrite this equation 8.1 in, in, in terms of instead of h so here h I was assuming g as constant right that I was taking only that much of height where g is constant but I am taking any arbitrary height here so here the difference is that uh, g is variable okay that's the difference between this formula and uh, uh, this formula okay this one so here g is variable okay so I want to write uh, this formula and this form also so, so how, will, how will I be writing it that's equals to minus g m this mass of the earth capital M and this small m mass of the object and this R2 is becomes my R so this R2 so WR is equals to so this R2 becomes my R and this R1 is equals to 0 okay so now I'm talking about this is the uh, main so so when this uh, when I'm taking this condition this distance so WR is equals to minus uh, G M M into so 1 by R minus 1 by 0 so or not taking uh, mm, 1 by 0 is not defined infinity so simply if I if I take it like this um, at the center the G is 0 actually so to write it in this way G M M upon R so this R2 is replaced with R so that's that's the distance R plus some constant like it was there at the surface of earth we have taken this this potential energy so here also there will be some potential energy and that is W1 here so that's the constant value okay so rewriting this uh, this equation just like I have written uh, uh, 8.21 okay so this is the potential energy uh, associated uh, with distance r so r is the distance from the center of the earth now once again uh, what will be w12 if i am writing w12 this equation so what will this equation becomes so I have written this standard equation just like R21 okay for R instead of H okay so W4H was what MGH plus W0 W4R so this was this was the height above the surface of R this is was your H and here uh, G was assumed to be constant uh, in this position. Now I am taking this R as the distance from the center. This is your R. And here G is varying. Okay, so I am writing these two things in the same way. Okay and that's equals to so from here uh, minus g m m upon r so i have this mass m over here i have this mass m over here plus w1 so this is at the surface of earth this also so both both these values are constant now i am writing it for w12 like i have written here for w12 that was equals to wh2 minus wh1 so here 
if I will be writing from this formula W uh, for, for this situation so W12 is equals to of course WR2 minus WR1 okay so like I was discussing that here uh, this uh, in the last uh, setting R is equal to infinity in the last equation so if we assume this uh, uh, this R as uh, infinity so what do we get we get R, uh, W work at infinity so work at infinity is equals to you can see that this becomes 0 plus W1 so thus uh, W1 is the potential energy at infinity that is the potential energy at potential energy possessed by the mass m at infinite distance from the earth so one should note that only the potential difference you know so what uh, this the difference of the potential energy between the two points has a definite uh, meaning okay because you don't know actually what this suppose w1 is so that is why it is the difference this matters for us that how much is the change we can set anywhere potential energy as as zero like you have a table so on the table top also you take the potential energy as a zero because when you are finding the work done you are not concerned with how much this ball is carrying energy it, it is carrying two joule or four joule or or five joule or or, or zero joule but no potential energy so here any it it, it possesses an energy but the work i have done here is suppose three joules so that is mg delta h that is my work done right and that comes out to be three joules suppose so so it is so what's important for us uh, it's not important for us what is the absolute potential potential energy here so like if it was zero so here it becomes three joule if it was two here it becomes uh, five joule here if it was four it becomes uh, uh, four plus uh, three seven joules so students what see we we are not concerned with this uh, zero two four or three four three five seven we can take any of these values we can take any of these right but what's important for us important for us is how much the work done that is work done is change in potential energy so we set the potential energy as per our needs so we are setting the potential energy here as a zero on the table okay and if i was lifting from the ground this ball so then I was assuming that potential energy here is a zero and this is a total potential energy carried by this ball. Is this clear? So absolute potential energy is not important for us because work done depends on change in potential energy. So we conveniently set potential energy is equal to zero as per our need. So remember this thing students. So it is our choice where we are setting potential energy as a zero on the center of the earth or on the ground of the earth or on the tabletop or might be if I am I, I'm, I'm on the uh, roof of uh, my house so that's the roof of my house and I, I'm throwing a ball here so if I ask how much is, how much is the, uh, the potential energy this ball is carrying so at this point uh, there might be the potential energy might be 2 joule why because I, I am setting this as uh, 0 joule potential energy at the rooftop okay so I have set the potential energy that is W1 here as 0 that's my choice like where I am assuming the origin to be that's my choice okay so similarly where I am setting potential energy as zero that is my choice according to where my calculations are easy so here my calculations are easy it is easy to tell that uh, the potential energy is two joule if i'm assuming this as zero so work done is equal to change in potential energy right so it is the change in potential energy which is equal to work done and so it doesn't matter whether here here if you assume it 10 joules so it, here it will have 12 joules so i'm not concerned with this 10 and 12 joule i'm only concerned with how much is the work done? 
So uh, we are concerned with work done, and work done means change in potential energy. So that is why we take we set one of the potential energy as zero, isn't it? Like even in the talk, where it was your choice where to set the like. Remember, in case of ladder, we set the moments about here at the foot of the ladder. Why? Because there were we, we had two force over. One was force of friction, and another was normal force. So the torque due to both the forces will be zero because R is equal to zero here. So we set the uh, uh, otherwise we have one force over here and we had one force over here, right? So we were not, we, we haven't set the uh, axis uh, means in the middle or at this point. We set the axis of rotation over here so that both these forces the torque due to these forces will be zero because R will be zero. So there also students it was our choice. So here also it is our choice where we are setting the potential energy to be zero. Okay, this is very important discussion. I hope you have understood it. So, because what matters is the difference in potential energy between the two points, okay? So one conveniently sets uh, W1 equals to zero means uh, so that the potential energy point is just the amount of work done. Why, why we are setting this as zero? Why we are setting the rooftop uh, uh, this W1 as zero. Why? Because uh, the potential energy at a point, at, at this point, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I've taken this mass from here to here and I'm setting W1 is equal to zero so that my work done is equals to the potential energy right at this uh, point. So that the amount of work done in displacing the particle from uh, even I have taken uh, uh, potential energy at infinity w1 is equals to zero i have set at infinity w1 equals to zero otherwise w1 equal uh, w infinity is equals to w1 you can set it any uh, of your choice but as taken it as a zero why because when i will be bringing this uh, uh, from w1 at w1 it is zero means the potential energy is zero at infinity infinity means it is away from the gravitational force of the earth that is infinity okay so we have calculated the potential energy at a point on the particle due to the gravitational forces on it uh, due to the earth and it is proportional to the mass of the particle right and the gravitational potential so so gravitational potential energy at a point of a particle so who is possessing the potential energy so students potential energy always you have to write these two things potential energy first is at a point okay at a point second thing is possess potential energy of a particle okay so these are the two things which is uh, uh, associated with potential you have to tell potential is always possessed by the particle and it is different at different different uh, points so you have to tell at which point you are talking about and of which particle you are talking about so potential energy at a point of a particle is due to the uh, gravitational forces on it due to the earth and it is proportional to the mass of the particle the gravitational potential now this was potential energy students now we are talking about gravitational so this was gravitational potential energy now i'm talking about only gravitational potential okay so what's the difference between gravitational potential energy and gravitation say same thing same things will be there in 12th class when we'll be studying electrostatic potential energy and electrostatic potential so instead of gravitational field there we will have electrostatic field so if you understand this so in 12th class it will be quite easy for you okay so students these are the basic tools that we need to study physics okay so the gravitational potential uh, is also due to gravitational force of the earth and it is defined as the potential energy of a unit mass at that point so what is gravitational potential so, so this was the gravitational potential at a point of the particle whose mass was m, 
okay but here gravitational potential at a point of a particle whose mass is equals to 1 kg okay so then if we put so so here the so that's the difference so gravitational potential energy if if i have any mass m but i call gravitational potential when the mass is equals to 1 unit mass is equals to 1 kg in SI units at that point. So at that point, if the particle is possessing a mass of one kilogram, then I will say that this is a gravitational potential at that point. Okay. So it is nothing but the so, so the gravitational potential is nothing but it is the gravitational potential energy of the particle, right? So it is nothing but the energy possessed by gravitational energy possessed by one kilogram of mass so this is the gravitational potential is equals to potential energy at that point of the particle when the mass is one kilogram okay so we use the word gravitational potential for the potential energy when mass is equals to one kilogram okay so this gravitational potential uh, gravitational potential energy we call gravitation potential so we have learned that the gravitational potential energy associated with the two particles of mass m1 and m2 and uh, uh, means uh, they are at a distance r and that is given by v is equals to so this v is equals to minus g m1 m2 divided by r so if we choose uh, R as infinity. So if R, so, what is the uh, this uh, gravitational potential energy is when R is equal to infinity. So anything upon infinity is zero. So if R is equal to infinity, then V will be equals to zero. Okay. So, so this is the gravitational potential energy associated with the two particles whose mass m1 and m2 and they are separated by distance r. So this is the formula students for the gravitational potential energy of a system of two masses. So this system has the potential energy okay this is the gravitational potential energy which is associated with the system of two particles whose mass m1 and m2 are they are separated by distance r okay so g m1 m2 by r so what will be the uh, gravitational potential so students uh, this i can write as v this i can also write as uh, w okay that's your choice but uh, now what what will be the symbol so, so symbol for this is uh, v or w okay what is the symbol for gravitational potential u when the mass is equals to one so then instead of these two symbols i will be using the symbol of gravitational potential that is u so put uh, uh, this uh, is equals to one so what will the formula so the formula that you will get is minus g so put uh, so when you have only one mass you need to t need not to take m1 and m2 uh, so one mass is m and another mass is uh, one so m1 you have replaced with uh, m and m2 is equals to one you can assume divided by r so this is equals to minus gm divided by r so that is the formula for your gravitational potential okay this gravitational potential this gravitational potential energy is this clear students okay so uh, both of them you can see that they are uh, uh, scalar quantities okay now if you have a system uh, if you have an isolated system of particles you will have uh, uh, total potential energy how will you find the total potential energy so total potential energy you can find that potential energy is the uh, sum of energy 
between all the possible pairs so like here i have written it i can i, I can only write it for two pairs at a time like i can only add only two vectors at a time so two so uh, m1 and m2 is uh, possessing this energy and suppose i have three masses suppose m3 also okay so what will the now energy possessed by these three masses uh, by, by this three this system so v12 and then v1 uh, potential energy bit of mass uh, m1 uh, m3 plus uh, 2 and 3 right is it okay so I, I can add this so so I can find this by the formula I know the formula G uh, m1 m2 upon if the distance between them is suppose they are uh, uh, three vertices of equilateral triangle so same same distance will be there between them and uh, so same distance are now this m3 over here so minus 1 3 so this minus g m1 and distance if, if suppose the difference are distance are separate so r to 1 m1 uh, m3 divided by distance r3 1 minus g uh, possessed by these two masses uh, m2 m3 divided by r 2 3 okay so that's how we find the uh, total potential energy of the system of three masses okay and what will be the gravitational potential so the, what will the gravitational potential so this is gravitational potential energy and this is gravitational potential you can write it with v or w so what will be this so simply put uh, like uh, uh, one of the mass as m so you can uh, add here means this this and this similarly you will get by gmr you will have three values and uh, you will add uh, those three values okay so let us do uh, one example and we uh, will be able to understand it uh, better if in little bit more depth if you want to study how this uh, this potential energy how it is adding up see I have no mass over here okay it is vacuum it is in the space there is no gravitational force over here it is total space and I am bringing mass m1 over here from infinity okay I have bought mass 1 over here so when I have bought mass 1 over here was there any force acting on mass m1 was there any force acting on mass m1 no because it was a complete space okay now I have mass m2 so mass m2 was actually being attracted by this uh, uh, mass m1 so when I was uh, uh, this mass m2 at infinity and I, when I was bringing it uh, so near so it was actually pulling it towards it so So then there was now the gravitational pull by this mass m1 for this mass m2 so here actually so combination of two at a time we take this so for gravitational uh, for electrostatic potential energy uh, for charges it worked that uh, there was no charge and then I was bringing another plus Q charge over here and then I was uh, they were actually repelling each other and I was working against the electric force so that work done was stored in the form of uh, electrostatic potential energy that we will study in class uh, 12 but here uh, 
this let us find gravitational potential energy between two masses at a time okay so very simple question we have uh, that is uh, example 8.3 so this is the last concept that we are going to do today very easy concept students so we have four masses this mass m1 and this is same mass m m and m so i have four masses placed at the vertices of the square whose length is l so the length of the square is l so this is the length of the square now you now we have to find two things first potential energy of system and second is you can write here v or you can write here w second is uh, the potential at the so potential energy of system of four particles and potential at a point so potential at the center so we have to find what is the potential at the center where the diagonals meet so this is the point which is at the center so here what is the uh, potential okay so what is this potential gravitational potential okay and this is the gravitational potential energy of the system so these two things we are going to find what are the formula students that we have for v the formula if if i have two masses m1 and m2 and the distance between them is r then uh, w is equals to uh, gravitational constant uh, minus we have just written minus g m1 m2 by r okay so and uh, what is the formula here for u for u it is uh, equal to we are taking uh, one mass as m and another mass as uh, 1 kg right so so this is the mass placed at this point so i am i am finding potential at the center so I, i i will place 1 kg mass at the center okay then i will find this between the uh, the potential at center due to this mass then potential at center due to this mass then potential at the center due to this mass then potential at the center due to this mass okay so this formula will be like in taking one mass at a time so minus g so this m1 will become n and this mass 1 so this is your m1 and this suppose your m2 so 1 will become 1 kg okay so this is 1 kg so here m1 and m2 neither of them were 1 kg okay and if one of them will become 1 kg then it is a potential okay rest of the this, so this is the only difference students okay only difference this so we have uh, now tell me students when will uh, when i will be finding the uh, w for the system how many combinations i will have i have uh, this this combination let us suppose these points are a b c d so i so what two combination i have i have a b i have uh, b c right i have uh, cd i have uh, da okay so these are the four masses combination 1 2 3 4 and now a and c gravitational potential energy between these two masses so that's combination number 1 comb 5 and what about this d and b this combination number 6 so total 6 pairs are possible okay see you start with m so m with this and then with this and then with this isn't it you can think it this way also how many combinations are possible you have done permutation combinations okay so the answer is 6 so 4 into 3 into 2 divided by 4 what's this formula 
Yes. Tell me, students, is it permutation or is it combination? Students, you have studied maths or not? Yes. <laughs> what is here? Permutation or combination? What is the formula for permutation? NPR. What is the formula for combination? NCR. Yes. Tell me. What's the problem? N is n factorial by n minus r factorial. N factorial by n minus r factorial. Okay. What about this one? N factorial upon? N factorial. N factorial. N minus, n minus r factorial. R factorial. So, it's not time like you have to. So, which formula I have used here? So, n is 4. So, how many uh, combinations of 2 can be possible? So, total I have uh, 4. So, combination of 2. So, arrangement doesn't matter. So, this doesn't matter. This. So, what I am uh, taking and what I am not taking. Okay. So, I am taking 2 at a time, right? So, 4C, 2. So, 4 factorial upon 4 minus 2 factorial into 2 factorial. So, that's equals to 4 into 3 into 2 divided by 4 minus 2 is 2 and that's 2. So, that's I get uh, 6. So students we get, uh, we do this uh, permutation combination in uh, physics also, okay? So just get ready for this. So how many possible combinations? 6. And here also you can use common sense. This is my mass m. So how many? 1, 2, 3. Again, so 1, 2, 3. So this one is mass here. So 4, 5 and this 6. 6 is same as 1. Arrangement doesn't matter. Now comes to this. So this, this and this is the new one, 6. What about this one? So this is already there, this is already there, this is already there. So 6 possible combinations. Okay. So now, so this, uh, so what, uh, what I am taking, how many, uh, I am taking 2 at a time, okay. So the arrangement of 2 taking time doesn't matter, that is why I am dividing. And arrangement of not taking, this I am not taking n minus r in the arrangement when I was doing. So this, this also doesn't matter. Okay, that is why I'm dividing it with both of them. Here, I was dividing into not taking. Because, if I was uh, taking two, and uh, uh, like their uh, uh, arrangement means position matters, which one is first and which one is second then it will be permutation then it will be 4 4 p2 and then it will only be i will be dividing with uh, not taking so i was 4 minus 2 i am not taking 2 i was taking this r factorial so its uh, arrangement uh, means its position i was considered considering so that is why here i am considering this uh, the arrangement of these two that i am taking i i am concerned with this arrangement so that is why I am not taking this. So here I am eliminating this, uh, the one which I am taking and which I am not taking. I am eliminating their, uh, means, so, so their positions doesn't matter which one is first or which one is second. So that's maths, not physics. Okay, let us do physics. Taking the time in luxury. Okay. So we have these masses, very simple thing students, very simple thing. We have to find this, this V. So how many total combinations? Six possible possible combination, what's the formula? Minus G, M, M. So here both the masses are same, right? What about the distances? Out of these six, four have the distances like this combination, this combination, this combination, this combination. They have the same distance that is L, right? And, now, and, and we are left with uh, two more combinations which is this one and this one yes 
So for four, uh, we have uh, uh, the G M M upon R, right? So this is the uh, gravitational potential energy for one of this combination, and for four combinations, I will multiplying it with the four, right? For the four combinations, and for here uh, I will have uh, two combinations, right? What is the distance here? So here the distance r is equals to l. So let me write l here. So what is the distance here, students? What is the diagonal of a square? Diagonal of a square is yes, this is l l. So this is under the root l square plus l square. So that's two uh, l square. So l root two. So here the distance for uh, two times means one is this combination, one is this combination. So that's uh, uh, minus. Uh, G M M upon uh, root two L into two. So what will be the total potential energy? So total potential energy is uh, what can you take as common? So here it, I have four. Here I have two. So two I can take common. So I am adding all this so that I will get this uh, total potential energy that is uh, like uh, this was one. One, two, you can say what, whatever you you say. So this is four v one. So they have the same one 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 potential energy. These combinations and these combinations have v two v two. Okay, they have v one v one v one v one. Right. Same arrangement, same mass, same distance. So total is four v one plus two v two. And so uh, adding them, taking the common minus two uh, g. M square upon L. So what I have left with here? So here I have left with only two, right? Plus what I have left with here? So everything I have taken. So I have left with. So students, this is the gravitational potential energy of the system. Now, what is the gravitational potential at center? Okay. So here I have the center. So these are the masses. Now I told you here you have to assume the mass one kg, okay? And same formula, but the mass is one kg. So you have same u for this case. What is this distance? So this this whole is root two l. So root two l by two. That is this much of distance. This half of the distance, okay? This distance was root two l. So half of it. So this also root two by two l. This is also. Root two by two l, and this is also root two by two l, and masses are also same. M and one, M and one, M and one, and up. So same, uh, they have uh, so total uh, at center gravitational potential is equals to four. So this let this be four u one, u one, u one, and u one. So four u one, and that's equals to four into minus g into m this mass. Into what's another mass? Another mass is one. So divided by what's the distance between them? Distance between them is root two by two l. Okay. So what's the uh, gravitational potential at the center due to these four masses? So that's equals to so uh, four into this is two uh, upon root two, right? Minus g m upon l. And this root two uh, cancel. This is root two. So this is four minus uh, will come out minus four root two g m upon l. So students, very important discussion. Okay, you can watch this video again if you uh, want to see it again. Thank you so much for being with me.